Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today we are going to do another quick look and it occurred to me that I had not actually done a quick look of Xubuntu. And so that is what we're going to have a quick look at today, especially since the uh, the new Xubuntu or the, the new Ubuntu flavors are all out. I've looked at, I think, all of the other ones at some point in time, but I've never actually looked at Xubuntu. And so we're going to go ahead and do that today. Um, so I went ahead and installed this on a virtual box. I poked around at it for about five or ten minutes. I didn't really think I needed to look at it any more than that because I'm familiar with XFCE uh, and I'm familiar with, uh, with a Ubuntu, and so uh, I'll be able to walk you through uh, through it pretty quick. Uh, primarily, I think this is going to be for somebody that's just wanting to have a look at some other distros. And uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to uh, just have a have a quick look. So first, Kitty wants to come and say hi. Hello, people. Use X Ubuntu. Their logo is a mouse, and he's cute, and he looks tasty. Are you going to eat the logo for the mouse for X Ubuntu? I think he is. I think he's going to eat the uh, the mouse for Xubuntu. All right. Well, anyway, uh, we are going to go ahead and start by having a look at the website. And uh, so you can go to xubuntu.org and you can get information. You can download this. Now, if you are new to Linux and you're wanting to know which one you would, uh, you'd you'd want to use, um, you might consider the 16.04 um, because this is what is called the LTS or the long-term support, meaning that this one here is has a less uh, propensity to break over time. If you're a little bit more adventurous or you need the absolute latest things, maybe you have a newer computer and you need to use you know better drivers, better kernel, you might consider then using the um, the more recent one, which actually. To get to, all you can get on the main homepage is the 16.04. I'm not quite sure why. But if you come down here and uh, find, where's it at? Uh, hmm, I found it earlier. There, there it is. I thought it was under the first link there. If you click on the download, then you'll see that you have the 16.04 over here. You also have the 17.10 here. Uh, and then, of course, you have 64 and 32-bit editions. Most of your computers are going to be 64. If you do happen to have something really old, then you would probably want to look at the 32. Uh, you can just look at your processor to determine what you have. Um, just do a, an internet search for your processor. Um, so, of course, you can uh, download the. Uh, you can download either a torrent or you can do, use a. Um, you know, one of the download mirrors. Pick whichever one you're going to look for, look at. I'm going to use the 1710 because it's the one that uh, I haven't looked at in the past. Of course, you can uh, come over and explore the site to get uh, information about it. Uh, also, here's their donate link under community. I would uh, encourage you to donate to the groups that you use their distros on a regular basis. So what we're going to do here is uh, I have booted this guy into a virtual box. And so we're going to go ahead and have a look at the distro over here. Um, and. Uh, what I'm seeing right away is that it looks like the guest editions are not installed um, on the system, and uh, that's actually kind of surprising to me. I uh, thought they would be. I just sorry, I just did a little test there to to double check on that. All right, so um, it does look like the guest editions are not installed, so I'm not going to worry about that part um, because this will work just fine. Just to to give you an overview. Now, how familiar am I with XFCE? It is not the number one desktop environment I like, but I have to say, after looking at this for just a few minutes, wow, they have modernized this a lot. Uh, so we still have uh, an older uh, look and feel with a lot of modern integrations. In fact, I even think I said in my video yesterday on the, the top five Linux uh, flavors that, that it doesn't have notifications, and I, that is actually incorrect, and I don't even know why I said that, because I know Cubes does, and Cubes is based on XFCE. So I do use XFCE on my Cubes computers because that's the only desktop environment you have available, um, out of the box anyway. And I also use it on my writing computer runs Peppermint. And Peppermint is, is also an XFCE um, uh, computer as well. And so I am very familiar with the desktop environment. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to walk you through the setup. So this is exactly as it's installed. I installed it and I did run updates out of the box. So what we have up here to start with is we have a XFCE menu up here at the top. This is actually one of the better menus, uh, especially for your lightweight distros. Let's actually go ahead and before we dump into this too much, let's go ahead and load up the task manager and see what the memory looks like. 
Um, so we're using 5% of our memory overall. Can I get... I uh, just want to see if I can actually see what the percentage of memory... Like, I can see the percentage is 5%. I want to see if I can actually get... Um, uh, see what I'm actually running as far as totals. Doesn't look like I have that option on this one here. Um, let's see if HTOP is installed. Nope, it's not. Okay. Um, so it's running 5%, and this is a, a 4 gigabyte, so do the math. It's not running much, uh, much at all. All right, so uh, with that being said, um, the menu here, you have the search functionality, you have a favorites, which you can add to, put your favorite items over here. Um, you also have the ability to expand it out, so you can set this kind of the size you want if you want something kind of small or if you want something kind of big. You have that option. That's kind of the nice thing about this menu is that you can really customize it out a whole lot. Um, we have uh, recently used applications, we have all applications, and then you can go down into the, the various lists. And we'll uh, go through this a little bit more slowly and see what, the, uh, uh, see what all the applications are installed. I did not install anything extra on this. And then we have here, we have a settings panel. So in here, we have a lot of the functionality of the settings from your themes to your desktop, your appearances, uh, notifications, and things like that. Uh, including panels, pretty much everything that you would need is right inside this settings panel, and that is uh, makes it a very nice thing. Um, so before we actually walk through this, let's also walk through the rest of the panel. Uh, we have a basic taskbar manager type thing, but it's at the top, and we have um, we have our um, network connection, Bluetooth, power, speakers, and our clock. Now you can come over here, right click on the clock, and hit your properties, and then you can set how you want it to look. So of course, uh, an LCD clock looks like this. Fuzzy will kind of give you a little bit of the numbers. Uh, we have our basic digital. We have a binary if you're into that, and we have an analog clock. So there's a lot of cool, uh, cool functionality you have here. You can display it in 24-hour format. You can show AM, PM. Um, you can display your seconds or not display your seconds, whichever you prefer to do. Now, it is also possible to edit the, the fonts and the coloring and things. So that is using some CSS. So it's a little bit more advanced. Um, here you can see what your um, tooltip is going to look like. So this is when you hover over it. It'll tell you what, uh, what that looks like. And then, of course, we have time and day settings here where you can set your time zone and whatnot. You'd have to unlock this to make any changes, enter your password. And then now we can adjust our, our time settings and things like that. Then we'll lock that guy back up. All right, so that's actually the clock. Um, so you have a lot of those settings. Now, if, if you're like me and you're not a big fan of your panels, I thought the cat wanted it down, but he's just happy and content sitting there. Um, if you're like me and you like your panels at the bottom of the screen instead of at the top, you can actually do that by right clicking and uh, go ahead and hit your property, uh, not your properties, uh, hit your panel, uh, panel preferences. You'll see that now it highlights um, in the red, and then if you hit the unlock panel, now you can move things around on here. Um, you can move the panel around, so you can literally put it on the middle of your screen if you want. It's a little annoying, but you can do that. So there, I'll drop the panel at the very bottom, and then if I want to, I can uh, right click and I can move these individual items and then I can just kind of you'll see that I can kind of drag them around a little bit So right click we're going to move that back to where it was of course There's a little spacer here. This is our panel. This is our task manager um, You also have the ability to add items to your panel um, So if you hit your panel and you can add new items, these are all of the items that you have so you can do notes, you can do places, screenshots, system monitor, weather updates. There's a lot of different things you can put on your panel. Now, if you're wanting to put a launcher on your panel, the best way to do that is actually just to come right up here into your, uh, into your menu and just grab it and drag it on down. Eh, maybe you have to unlock that. I know it works. There you go. Uh, drag it over until you get that red bar. Hit create new launcher. And then you'll see that now we have our Firefox on our panel there. All right. 
So that is uh, how you make adjustments to that. We'll go ahead and click on our settings here. Um, under your About Me, this is just your account settings, so you can put in all your information into there. Appearance is what will adjust your coloration. So you see if you just click on these, you don't even have to hit any Apply. It's automatically going to apply everything there. Uh, you can pick these. You should be able to customize these, I believe. Um, I forget exactly where that is, but I know I've customized these as well. Um, so there you can select what, whatever you want. We'll go ahead and use the new mix. Uh, your icons, these guys here will, will control what your icons look like. So you see again, we just click on these and then it'll kind of change your icons to whatever uh, you happen to have selected. Actually, I kind of like these ones here. These ones looked kind of neat, a little fuzzy, uh, but I kind of I like that. I don't know, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep with that one. Not sure why they look fuzzy. The uh, That icon theme is uh, a pretty standard one, but oh well. Um, here's where you can adjust your fonts. Uh, so over here is your font size. If you want to bump up your fonts, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, that'll make your system a little bit easier to see. You can, of course, change the font um, in there. So that's nice and easy. And then um, there's uh, you know a series of other settings that you have. All right. So that is your appearance. We can go back to our all settings. You'll see that some of your font items do not have um, icons for everything. Keep that in mind. Um, under your desktop, this is where you can make adjustments to your, uh, to your uh, uh, desktop background. So again, what's kind of nice about these, I like these ones where you, um, I like these ones where you don't actually have to, um, where you don't actually have to uh, hit the apply button. The cat's just being adorable. He's just kind of laying there. Look at that. <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead and uh, pick one of these that looks good. I like that. That's a nice one. I like that uh, that appearance there. All right. Do you want to keep the one that has a squirrel on it? Do you? All right. I think he's voting for the squirrel, but that's okay. Uh, here's your menu editor. If you want to adjust what your what is on your menus, you have the ability to uh, come in here. You can add things, remove things. Now, the cool thing about uh, about these uh, like XFCE, as I said in my uh, video yesterday about KDE, KDE is a little bit more difficult to get through all the settings. What's cool about XFCE is it does have about the same amount of settings, but it's a lot easier to understand what everything is doing. And so you have uh, you have a lot of a lot of ability to do that. Um, preferred applications. This will give you any preferred applications. So if I had multiple different um, web browsers installed, I could pick whichever one my default is. And under here's your utilities. So here's your terminals, um, preferred file managers. All right, so that way if you happen to have multiple file managers available, I'm gonna go into a uh, an icon setting that actually has icons for everything for the purpose of this video so we're, we don't get lost. What I'm seeing is that there are several places you don't see the icons and it's kind of hard to see in the video what I'm doing. Um, here, if, if you happen to have additional uh, drivers, so if you happen to have some proprietary type software or there's proprietary drivers, you can actually come in here and uh, click in on these so here's actually, huh, let's go ahead and apply that. Maybe it does have guest editions installed, they're just not enabled. And then here's, yep. All right, let me actually see if I can adjust my screen size now. I might have to restart to, to have drivers take over effect. Um, keyboards. That's you, Katie. The display on this is not working. Um, that might just be because I'm in a virtual box. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. Um, removable media is over here. Here's your software updater. So this guy will give you a notification at the top of your screen, I guess at the bottom of the screen now, if you have uh, updates to do. But you can go ahead and uh, run that. Uh, the settings will allow you, it should allow you to, to make adjustments to uh, when it checks for settings, how it checks. 
And then under software and updates, this is a nice Ubuntu system because you have the ability here to add PPAs directly from inside of your, your GUI without going into the terminal. Uh, this will determine how frequently it will check for updates. Uh, that's our additional drivers, of course. And uh, if there are, uh, if if there is a pre, uh, like a pre-release or an alpha or a beta version of this, you can click on this guy here, and it will actually update your uh, update your system to the to the development test as well. Only do that, of course, if you know what you're getting into. All right, so that is uh, that is that. Uh, Right-clicking the desktop, we have uh, the ability to create a launcher, which is going to give you um, just a uh, any old um, uh, shortcut, basically. In the Windows environment, this would be like right-clicking and create new shortcut. A URL link. Um, I've never actually done this. Let's try this real quick. Click on icon. Okay, so it actually opens up our icons. Let's see if there's. Uh, let's pick. Hmm. Here, let's just go ahead and click click on that one. Just seeing what this one does. So, double click on that. Untrusted link launcher. Launch anyway. Let's see what that does. Huh. Okay. So it launches your web browser directly to that site. That's actually a nice functionality. I like that. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's just right clicking hit that we can create a folder we can create a new document of course to add items to these if you're new to Linux to add an item into this you just go into your home folder and there should be a templates and then what you see here is a plain text an open document and a spreadsheet whatever is in this template folder will automatically be created if you right click and create a new document uh, so I use these on my mint systems to create basic templates for uh, the various file systems I'm doing or video folders or whatever else. So that's kind of what I like to do. Um, we can open the terminal um, and we should, let me see if we have the option to open a folder as root. Uh, okay, That's one of the features I really like in some of the systems. It looks like I do not have that option. Uh, that's okay. I'm, I'm all right with that. All right, so we can arrange our desktop items. Here's our desktop settings, which will bring us right on back to that. Um, this is where you can add and remove various icons. So file system on Linux isn't the best icon to keep on your desktop. Everything else I, I like. So um, can I move them around? Hmm. Hmm, not sure why I was not able to move those around before. I can now. Uh, there's your properties for your desktop. So it looks like overall the uh, the XFCE desktop, um, and here we have another uh, another menu here if you want this. What? Um, talk about Ubuntu and I have a cute cat on the screen. I mean, this is set for a million views. <laughs> All right. Um, overall, it looks like the XFCE desktop, it's really coming along with a lot of modern features with an older style look, which is really cool. I think a lot of people still like those older styles. Um, I know I do because I don't care how modern something is. I like something that I can be effective in. And uh, this type of format, I can be highly effective in, in how, this, uh, how this system works. Um, so overall, this looks like a very nice distro to use if you are uh, new to Linux and you want something with a, a more familiar feel to it that's fairly lightweight. This would be a very good logical distro to check out. Um, again, this is Xubuntu, which is Ubuntu running XFCE. Here's our software package. It looks like the... Um, um, this is something that, that is in all new Ubuntus. I'm not a huge fan of this one. It's, it's the GNOME Software Center. I really don't like this implementation of, of the software system. Um, I'm not a huge fan personally, um, but it's not it's not super bad. It's not like it's it's not like it's horrible. Uh, I just prefer the older Ubuntu Software Center. That's the next thing. Let's go ahead and do. Let's go ahead and have a look at all of the uh, software that's on here. So um, what I like about the Ubuntu distros is that they feel to me like complete operating systems in that there are system tools, there's a lot of easy settings, and they come with a decent amount of, uh, of applications 
uh, that are uh, that are preset. So um, here we have uh, now some people might think this is too much, but that's okay. Um, and of course, each one of the flavors is going to have a lot of their own functionality. Like uh, this has. Uh, uh, XF burn. Uh, other ones might come with Bersario or some Linux distros or uh, Ubuntu flavors rather may not come with a uh, CD burner at all, mostly because a lot of computers aren't even coming with CD drives anymore. Um, but we have a calculator, uh, character maps, fonts. So these are all things that are, are fairly uh, handy to have on hand. Of course, we have the LibreOffice Math installed, uh, Minecraft, or uh, not Minecraft. Um, uh, was it Mines? Is that Minesweeper? There you go. Uh, Sudoku. There's a. I, don't know, I haven't seen the puzzle collection before. Sometimes I just like going into some of these and see what we got. Uh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Huh. Cool. I'll have to play with that one a little bit more. All right, so that's games. Uh, graphics, we have a image viewer, our simple scan, a document viewer. For internet, we have Firefox, we have Pigeon, uh, we have uh, Thunderbird and Transmission. Multimedia, we have uh, just a basic media player, one, uh, one system media player. Uh, we've never used Perl Media Player before, so that's neat. Um, Office, we have our dictionary, document viewer, our full LibreOffice suite. Um, I'm not familiar with Orange. Um, comes with desktop, like a calendar, excuse me, a calendar, and I'm um, uh, not sure what else, everything else is on Orange. That's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, let's see. And of course, our settings, everything that is available in this main settings panel will be right inside here in settings. So if you know you want to go to something individually, you can just go right into settings. If you want the whole panel, just click on that button up there. And then with our settings, uh, we have, uh, we can, let's see, I'm not familiar with this one either. I have to look at, look at that software package. Um, and then of course we have our uh, task manager as well. Uh, so that is, uh, that is XFCE and, uh, and XUbuntu. Uh, very nice system. I, I mean, I like the, uh, the customizability of it. It's uh, very lightweight, keeps the modern, like has some modern features such as your notifications and things, but it's not an overtly modern, uh, modern system in the event you're not looking for that. Um, overall, I think XFCE is a very respected desktop environment. Um, and it's certainly one to, uh, one to keep an eye on, especially if you want more of a traditional feel, uh, like a Windows feel type environment. Uh, easy to customize, a lot of features and options. Um, very robust system. So this would be a good logical choice if you are looking for a uh, uh, looking for a good good Linux distro. Go ahead and check that one out. So thanks for watching. Um, and if you would like to help support what we are doing, check out switchtolinux.com/support. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.